everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're in Grand Traverse County, more specifically at Grand Traverse Academy in the first and second grade room of Mrs. Kessel. And Mrs. Kessel, thank you very much for making the time. Thank you. All right, we're talking about, well, what's going on in the classroom. And one of those things is a leader dog. Mrs. Kessel has done, what, this is your sixth leader dog? It is, yes. Okay. She's my sixth. So how did you get into all of this? Um, I'm a lab lover. And this was kind of in a way that I could always have a lab puppy yeah. and help out other people um, and make sure that I guess I always have puppies. All right, so when you get a leader dog, how do you get one? Where do they come from? They come from Leader Dogs for the Blind in Rochester Hills. Um, you can go online to leaderdog.org and apply um, by filling out an application. And then um, if everything checks out, then they'll approve you to raise a puppy. Okay, so, uh, and what are you teaching the puppy? Because you keep them for a year, but what are, you, what are you teaching the puppy? Well, I'm a puppy raiser, so I pick her up when she's about seven weeks old, and she'll go back when she's about 12 to 13 months. And during that time, she's learning all of her basic obedience and to have manners. So I'm socializing her by bringing her to work with me. I take her to church. I take her to um, the grocery store, um, any place, restaurants that I might go. And I just teach her to have good manners and go places that, someone who's visually impaired would take her when she's older. All right, and you've done this. This is your sixth uh, puppy to do this. Do you get attached to them over that year, and is it hard for you to say goodbye? Um, we get very attached, and it's very difficult to say goodbye. And I will say that I've cried for every one that I've taken back, and my students cry with me when we say goodbye. But we know that on the other end, there's somebody who's going to cry happy tears because we've given them some independence. All right. So yeah, you're in your classroom where you bring, or you've brought all your dogs into your classroom. How do you integrate that into the teaching day? Um, well, Holly has a crate in our classroom that she spends some of her time with because one of the big things that she needs to learn how to do is to settle yes. while things are going on around her. So um, she spends time in her crate and just lets everything happen during the day that would happen. She goes outside with us for recess. Um, she walks with us to gym or to any assemblies that we go to. She goes on field trips. She eats lunch under the table, um, just like she was in a restaurant. Right. And um, the kids just learn from the beginning. We read a book before she comes in that teaches that... Um, leader dogs have a job she's right. a puppy in training and she has a job when her bandana's on the kids know that she's working and that we don't oh. run up and pet her they know that um, we need to treat her as a service dog not a classroom pet and um, they learn a lot about how to interact around service animals out in the world um, just because we have one in our classroom. So I've already vi violated one of the rules because I did pet Holly Joe, and well, she's got her bandana on. So you shouldn't, are you saying you shouldn't do that? You shouldn't touch a service dog. You should never say a service dog's name or um, touch them when they're working. For her, her bandana, or as she gets a little bit bigger and can fit into her jacket, yeah. represents to her that she's working. Eventually she'll wear a harness. And um, But I will say that one of the reasons why I bring her to school is the reality of it is when people go out that are visually impaired into yeah. the community, they do notoriously touch right. service yeah. dogs. And so we try to teach her to ignore and oh. um, stay focused. But how weird for me to be in a classroom and breaking rules. Yes. That seems to be quite natural for me. <laughs> All right, so how, how did you get into this? Um, I had a lab that passed away and we weren't really ready for another dog. And so I convinced my husband that maybe we could just have a one year commitment and when I took that puppy back um, to Leader Dogs, I came home with a new puppy. Oh and it just kind of started that Get cycle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to stop. And then this puppy will go back to Rochester Hills where it will find a family, I suppose, or, and, or, yes. or, or, or um, a, a, an owner. Back, she'll go back to Rochester in um, May, and she'll spend about three months with her harness training. So right. she'll, she'll learn um, how to wear a harness and how to guide someone who's blind. And, and then if she graduates from that, if she makes it, provided okay. she makes it, then she'll be placed with a client and spend a month there on campus training with her new person. And it's a two-for-one deal. You're teaching Holly Joe things, and you're also teaching the children things. Right. It's, it's a win-win. Win. It's yeah, a yeah. total win-win. And one of the things that we really pride ourselves in here at Grand Traverse Academy is that we try to pay it forward yeah. and show the kids that the world's bigger than just us. And um, so this is one great way to do that. It's fun to have a dog in the room. Right. Um, it's always calmer. It's always a more loving environment when you have a dog around. And it'll be hard to say goodbye, but they'll learn right. that, you know what, it's okay because someone else will have independence. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And thanks for being a teacher and not yelling at me, which I'm used to. In Grand Traverse County at Grand Traverse Academy with Holly Joe and Mrs. Kessel, I'm Vic McCarty, My News 26.